Welcome to the channel. My name is Judy and I love travel and history. If you're new here, you're very welcome. We're going to tour St. John's Co Cathedral, a Baroque beauty located in downtown Valletta, Malta. Today I want to show you this jaw-dropping work of art and architecture. But first, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. This is Fra Bernard, painted by Mathia Preti, one of Malta's greatest artists. Bernard, shown here in his costume as a physician, was the founder of the Hospitaller Order of St. John of Jerusalem, Rhodes, and Malta, to use their full name, but commonly known as the Knights of Malta. In this post, I'll just refer to them as the Knights. They are a Roman Catholic religious order originally established to provide aid and medical assistance to the Crusaders in the Middle East. You might be asking yourself who, what, and imagine that you never heard of these men, but the truth is, if you ever watched the Maltese Falcon, you have. The Knights were devoted Christians who came from all over Europe. They fought their way fairly successfully all the way to Acre in the Middle East during the Crusades, but over the decades were pushed back and forced to withdraw by the Turks, first to Cyprus, then to Rhodes, where they basically set up as pirates and annoyed Suleiman the Magnificent to the point where he forced them out again, and then finally to this, their last redoubt in Malta. Malta was an uninviting and rather inhospitable rock, but it was what they had. They settled across the Grand Harbor from today's Valletta in Burgu and set about fortifying the islands. You'll still find works from the 16th century all over. They withstood a four-month siege by Suleiman's finest in the 16th century and lived to tell the tale. After the siege, they decided to fortify the area we now know as Valletta. One of the biggest things they did was to build St. John's Co-Cathedral here, originally a church for the Knights. The interior of the church is considered to be one of the finest examples of Baroque architecture in Europe. Although the outside of the cathedral appears rather plain, except perhaps for the twin towers, one of which has three clocks on it, and unassuming, the interior is another matter altogether. Once inside, I gawked, and my eyes drifted upward from the floor, which I didn't even notice at first, along the columns and walls, and all the way to the huge barrel vaulted ceiling you see over the nave and in this photograph. Below the ceiling is another impressive feature of the church, hundreds of marble tombstones, which we'll see in a few minutes, the final resting place of many important knights of the Order of St. John. You'll recall this Baroque interior owes its existence and design to a Calabrian artist named Mathia Preti. Preti not only designed and coordinated the reading, decoration. He did a great deal of the work, including the frescoed ceiling himself. Notice that every part of the interior is literally covered with gilt, paint, and frescoes. When you look at that ceiling from floor level, the figures appear to be statues, but are in fact trompe l'oeil, painted to look to the viewer like three-dimensional figures. Although Mattia Preti was responsible for the design and much of the interior decoration, including the frescoes on the ceiling, he was by no means the only artist contributing to the splendor of the cathedral. The cathedral also possesses two paintings by Caravaggio. This bad-tempered, bad-acting Italian was born in 1571 as Michelangelo Marussi in a village outside Milan called Caravaggio, which is how he got his name. His paintings combine a realistic observation of the human state, both physical and emotional, using something called chiaroscuro, a style with a dramatic use of light and darkness. Perhaps the knights felt some kind of mystic kinship to Caravaggio. The order was quite violent and military. Caravaggio trained in Milan before moving to Rome. He developed a reputation as an artist, but also as a violent person. In fact, a street fight in Rome led to a death sentence for murder and forced him to escape the country. He arrived in Malta in 1607, where he became a knight of the order. He only stayed for two years, after which he had to flee Malta as well, this time to Sicily. He died a few years later under uncertain circumstances. Caravaggio's beheading of St. John the Baptist is the most famous work in the church and is considered Caravaggio's masterpiece, the largest canvas he ever painted, and the only painting he ever actually signed. This is Caravaggio St. Jerome sitting and writing, and was completed in either 1607 or 1608. As I mentioned, he didn't stay in Malta very long. There's an earlier version of this in the Borghese Gallery in Rome. The painting was commissioned by one of the Knights of the Order, a man named Ippolito Malaspina. 
Malaspina wasn't present for most of the great siege. He arrived as part of a small relief force toward the end of the battle, but he did witness part of it. He was related to and knew some of the men who had sheltered Caravaggio while he was still in Italy and on the run for that murder charge. The best guess is that Malaspina wanted to emphasize the more charitable aspects of the order with himself at the helm, and that this painting of St. Jerome, who wasn't a fighter but rather a scholar and a translator of the Bible, used himself as a model. This is the main altar of the co-cathedral. Apparently, Matthias Preti was really overloaded with all of the rest of his work, or perhaps he wasn't even a sculptor. So the work on the main altar was farmed out to Melchior Kaffa, a local boy born across the bay in Burgu, who had studied and worked in Rome and was already famous by the time he got the commission. Kaffa's plan was for a large bronze sculpture group showing the baptism of Christ. He was hard at work on it when part of the foundry collapsed on top of him in September 1667 and killed him. Four decades later, Caffa's only pupil, Giuseppe Mazzuoli, abandoned the idea of the cast metal piece and finished a marble group called The Baptism of Christ, which you see here. It is eye-catching to say the least. The knights were composed of eight orders, or langs, and each lang had its own chapel, dedicated to a specific saint. We can't visit them all today, but we'll sample several to give you an idea of the lavish, rich, over-the-top decorations. The lang of Alverne is dedicated to Saint Sebastian, an early Christian martyr. The saint's martyrdom is depicted in the altarpiece, now attributed to Silvestro Cario, a painter who had settled in Malta in the 1620s, although there's some dispute about the authorship. Saint Sebastian is seen, as most commonly depicted in art and literature, at least in the Catholic world, tied to a post or a tree and shot with various arrows that pierced his body. The walls here are carved stone and gilt in 24 karat gold leaf. The two twisted columns you see on either side of the altar became fashionable after Bernini's Baldaccio in the Vatican and were added later. The chapel to the Lang of Aragon is dedicated to St. George. The altarpiece shown here by Matthias Preti shows us St. George on horseback and is considered one of his masterpieces, although there are many others. In addition to altars, each of the chapels also houses graves and memorials, and this one is particularly rich in that regard, housing the earthly remains of four grand masters, Martin de Redden, who died in 1660, Raphael Contenay, who died in 1663, Nicholas Cotenay, who died in 1680, and Ramon Perelios y Roquefort, who died in 1720. I had to do some digging on this one because there were two Cotenays who were Grand Masters of the Knights. This is the Cotenay Funerary Monument. Many of the knights are memorialized in the floor, but some of the Grand Masters have funerary monuments in the various chapels. Although the knights were unmarried and theoretically childless, that didn't mean they were without family. Raphael Cotenev was a Spanish knight from Aragon who served as 60th Grand Master between 1660 and 1663. You might recall that he was the knight who ordered the redecoration and refurbishment of the interior so as to rival the churches of Rome. When he died, he was succeeded by his brother Nicholas, whose funerary monument we see here. Nicholas continued work on the refurbishment and redecoration of the cathedral, but did much more. In the front of the minds of the knights in these days was always the worry that somehow the Turks would come back to finish them off. Nicholas Cotenay improved the fortifications of Malta. He funded the construction of something called the Cotenera Lines, which were named in his honor. This basically was a huge fortress that could accommodate up to 40,000 people across the harbor in what is sometimes called the Three Cities. Cotenay's reign also saw the construction of Fort Ricasoli and various modifications of Floriana lines. No one of his actions explains the beauty of this monument, but he truly does deserve to be remembered. The Chapel of Castile, Leon, and Portugal is dedicated to St. James the Less. Matthias Preti shows us St. James, who St. Jerome concluded was a brother of Jesus. St. James was one of the first witnesses of the resurrection and received a special appearance from Jesus before he ascended to heaven. The Chapel of the Lang of Italy is dedicated to the Immaculate Conception and St. Catherine of Alexandria. Its altarpiece depicts something called the Mystic Marriage of St. Catherine, again by Matthias Preti. 
The Lang of Germany has an interesting history. It was originally assigned to the Lang of England, but the chapel was later reassigned to Germany after the English Reformation. I suppose when the English expunged the existence and memory of the Catholic Church in their lands, the Catholic Order had no hesitation about expunging the existence of the, of the English members of the Order. It is dedicated to the Epiphany of Christ, and on the altarpiece you can see the Adoration of the Magi by Maltese painter Stefano Erardi. The image on the right shows a double-headed eagle, the emblem of the German Lang, carved on the walls as well as, as well as various coats of arms in the chapel. This is the only chapel that has no funerary monuments dedicated to Grand Masters. The reason is that there was only one German Grand Master of the Order, Ferdinand von Homspeck, and his reign only lasted for one year prior to the expulsion of the Order from Malta by Napoleon. The chapel was damaged during World War II, but carefully restored after the war. One of the first things you see when you come into the cathedral is the pavement. It's composed of tombstones of some 400 knights, made up of inlaid marble and dating back to the early 17th century. They cover the cathedral floor from the nave, the chapels, and even the oratory. Each one of these tombs is a commemoration of a specific knight of the order. The more important ones were placed closer to the front of the church. They're richly decorated with inlaid marble and of the coat of arms of the knight buried below, as well as images relevant to that knight, often telling a story of triumph and battle. Here's a different tombstone. Although they bear some commonalities, each is quite individual. After all that history and theology, it's time for a delicious delight of Maltese cuisine is an amalgamation of the cuisine of every nation that ever conquered, possessed, passed through, owned, or inhabited these islands. And today shows strong Italian, Spanish, French, Provencal, and other Mediterranean cuisines, with some later British culinary influence added in. Because of the nature of the island, much of the food always had to be imported, and still is. The traditional Maltese stewed rabbit is often identified as the national dish, which I will show you when we do our city tour. Knowing a bit of the history of the island and how the Turks posed a deadly threat to it, you might be surprised to find out how many Turkish establishments there are in Malta. The Maltese are wise enough and have gotten by for millennia by knowing when to let bygones be bygone. This place, Moos, is a carryout. It was wildly and deservedly popular, in my opinion, and so good that I not only rated them on Google Maps, but gave them a five-star review. Since my time, it appears they've not only survived the, the pandemic, but have thrived. They're now a chain. Thank you for visiting the cathedral today and for joining me for Carry Out Turkish Kebabs. If you think this content is interesting or useful, please like, share, and subscribe. This will help the channel grow. Travel content often involves a lot of history, and history can be really word heavy, heavy enough that the details often don't make it into a video blog. If you care to dig deeper, you can visit my regular blog on WordPress, where you'll find deep dives, travel tips, reviews, warnings, and the nuts and bolts on how to travel safely and conveniently. If you'd like to keep up with my posts, you can follow me on Twitter. The addresses are on your screen 